So uh, I need you guys to start half kneeling on hopefully something comfortable for like your knee. We're gonna start the day with uh, quite a few movements, about six or seven things, and we're gonna go through them pretty smoothly, three rounds. The goal is that by the time we get to your third round, you're feeling awesome, okay? And that when we're done that third round, you're just like, man, I'm so glad I did this. Uh, shoulders are feeling good, spine's feeling good. After those three rounds, we'll then move to some more specific like stretches. So let's get your left leg up like me. It'll just be a little bit easier. With your left leg forwards, you're gonna rotate your chest towards your left leg, over your left leg, and we're gonna do a thoracic reach back behind our body. Trying to reach backwards in line with our back foot. A little pause there. We're gonna do two more repetitions in and out. A little pause, add the fingers, get a nice reach. And just be mindful, I'm trying to open up my rib cage, trying to open up my chest, shoulder blade, and then extend through my elbow. Nice, same arm. Now we're gonna do a diagonal stretch. Sean and Janelle know this one. Instead of reaching backwards, you're gonna reach down and tap your hamstring, knee, heel, calf, arch of foot. Give yourself a little pause. Something that's like pretty accessible for this first set. That's not aggressive, not hard on your hip, not hard on your back, not hard on your knee. Good, other side. I'll angle just a little bit here. So other side, right legs forwards, we'll go right into our thoracic reach. Using some good balance here, adding that pause. Try and think about reaching your finger as far away from your shoulder, excuse me, as you can. So really trying to lengthen that arm as you reach backwards behind you. That's our third rep. We'll go into our diagonal stretch. So over the same direction, but this time down. So I'm gonna use a little bit of spine to reach and touch my knee or my calf, Achilles, or my heel. Last one. Give yourself a little pause. Nice, a little shake, shake. We're gonna go to a little down dog action. I'm just gonna move my mat to the side, but you guys should probably be good to go. Give yourself a little plank to start, okay? Gently start to enter an up dog. If you can, you're gonna rest your knees. If you can, you're gonna relax your feet behind you. You're trying not to collapse into your shoulders. So you're pushing up nice and high. Maintain that strong push away from the floor as you add your toes, lift the knees, push, 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 push up and away. I'm gonna get onto my tiptoes. As I lean backwards, I'm gonna to start to drop my heels towards the floor. Nice, and now we're gonna reverse. Go back onto my tiptoes, butt is high. I'm gonna push off the toes as I lean far and wide over my shoulders. I'm gonna breathe in, I'm gonna drop knees gently. If I want to, I drop my hip as low as I want. But we'll do just one more. Continually push up and away from the floor, push up and away from the floor, push up on your tiptoes as you go back. Just trying to drive those heels down for a second as best you can. Back onto the tiptoes, gliding, reaching forwards, pushing hard away from the floor, dropping knees, dropping toes. Nice. Good. Just a, a few seconds here in 90-90. Pick a side that you want to be on. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. We're going to do internal rotation stretch. So if you're facing the camera like me, just going to take your back hand, put it behind your body somewhere. And we're just going to generate a stretch on the trail leg here. Okay. Don't want it to be intense. We're going to be here just for a few deep breaths. No more than 10, 15 seconds. If it's not bad, you can always adjust so that you're taller or you turn more with the chest. Give me one more deep breath. Nice, easy transition. I'll show you this side from the front. So you guys are of course facing me this way. Take the backhand, rotate it over. Couple deep breaths, probably three or four controlled breaths here. Let's do four, that's one. Here's two, knees are flat on the floor as best as you can, meaning they're not popping up actively, but you're pressing them down. Three, here comes number four. Nice, okay, so we got a little wrist work. Gio's with us live, so Gio, you gotta be super gentle with this one, but uh, Janelle and Sean, uh, however it feels good, do whatever you want. Let's go wrist outwards to the sides. I'm gonna lean and rock, I'm gonna lift up the opposite hand. Pretty classic move at movement strength. Geo, maybe just lifting or just going side to side. And this would be a good regression for anyone watching later. Just going side to side, 
just a little bit of force. And if you want to, you can always bring your knees closer to your body. Let's get hands forwards now and fingers dialed outwards just a little bit. So like at one o'clock and 11 o'clock. And then really softly, we're gonna rotate at our shoulders and turn our elbows in towards the body. Rotate at our shoulders and turn our elbows forwards of the body. A couple reps here, nice and gentle. You're not trying to crash to your end range. So note how smoothly I exit and enter any of my end ranges. Gio again, being super, super delicate here. Gio you might even just need to do like an unweighted stretch here. One more. Good, make your way to a squat. Any kind of squat's fine for me, doesn't matter. Low, high, feet on something for today, all good. Five repetitions of knee pushes. Clasp hands, make fists, whatever you wanna do. Don't let your feet move from position as you gently push your knees out and do four more. So this is just about the finishing of our first round. We're gonna do two more a little bit faster. We're gonna add some changes here and there with some of the movements. But like I said at the beginning, at the end of the third round, you should feel great. And every time we do the a movement again, it should feel better and better. Good, nice. Okay, so to where we started, grabbing your yoga mat if you need to, or ab mat, whatever you have. We're gonna start off with our half kneeling thoracic reach back, strong leg. On the second set, I want you to think about isometrically pulling this heel backwards as if you were gonna do that. Don't wanna see any movement, but that's what I want you to think about. We're just gonna help you start to contract through your hamstring. And with your opposite hip, I want you to pull that hip forwards, which is really gonna cement you in your position as we now rotate and reach, pulling heel backwards, pulling back hip forwards. Exhale, rotate and reach. So really trying to create some stability and strength with the legs. Last one, rotate and reach. Should feel a little bit more lubricated than the first time. Good, now we got our diagonal. I'm gonna reach down, hammy, knee, calf, whatever. Two more. Make sure you're breathing. Last one, let's get a five second hold. Wherever you wanna be at, five, four, three, two, one. Nice, quick transition. Oh, the leg right away. Same thing, I'm gonna isometrically in my position, pull my heel backwards, pull my opposite hip forwards, feel that really locked in positioning. Rotate, reach, extend fully, try and get that finger as far away from you as you can. And again, two. Oh, it feels great. Last one, three. Little pause, not too, too long, because we still got the diagonal. Nice, and now diagonal, whatever feels accessible for you. Maybe you're a little bit more comfortable in the second round. You wanna go a little bit further back, go for it. A little pause, three, two, one. Nice, right to our up dog to down dog. This time when we get into down dog, we're gonna add a toe tap uh, per side. I'll show what that looks like if you don't know. It can be a knee tap, it can be a hip tap. You'll see what I mean shortly. Let's get right into our up dog position, okay? Here, toes on the floor. Start to push up away, push up away, push up away, push up away. You're gonna glide backwards. And this time, once you get your heels to the floor or as low as they can, maybe they're an inch or two off, put your hands in a good position. Take a breath in. You're gonna reach your left hand towards your right knee, right shin, or right toe. Hold, relax that other side. Right hand now to left knee, left shin, left toe, hold. Feels awesome. Good, one more rep per side. Geo, if you need to rest, all good for the wrist. This time I want you to make contact and I want you to try and pull your face through a little bit. So I got a strong right arm, left hand gripping my shin, right, rotating through. Other side, switch the hand. Now I got my right hand on my left shin, I'm turning away from you guys. Looking through and holding for five, four, three, two, one. Nice. Good. Take a seat back to 90 90. Over your forward leg. Take a breath. Be gentle with the hand up first. Moving over to the back leg here. At this time, we're going to add a little bit of intensity to the stretch. It doesn't need to be crazy. 
Um, and if you're gonna cramp, if you're feeling a cramp sensation start and just back off a bit. But while you hold your position, if you have a pocket or if you can visualize a pocket on your trail leg hip, I want you to think about rotating that pocket down and in towards the floor, okay? Just like so. I got a little shift in my hip from here to here. And I want you to softly squeeze your butt cheek as you hold that. For some of you, you might feel a release. It might feel easier. For some of you, it might be like a big difference. Geo, if you need to, for your wrist, Geo, or anyone with wrist issues, you can kind of just be doing this right here and getting a stretch on your back hip. Nice, we'll hold this for another three, two, one. Pretty smooth little flip here, just looks like this. Other leg, same thing. I'm gonna breathe, take a second, get a little bit of tension, and then I'm gonna try and roll that pocket down and towards the floor. So I'm trying to rotate the pocket, pull it towards the floor. Okay, squeeze glutes, squeeze hamstrings, try and get some tension through this hip to create a little stretch. We got another three, we got another two, we got another one. Good, nice. Wrists round two, we'll do an unweighted sequence. Okay, we'll take hands. I really want you to splay your fingers nice and wide. Try and keep them splayed as you open up through the wrist. Okay, and softly pull back into some extension. And you guys can re regulate how much you want here. Um, it's not going to do a lot compared to how much keyboarding we do these days, but this is a nice thing to do here and there if you, do, if you are at a keyboard a lot. Good. Other side. Splay the fingers nice and wide. Gently pull those down. When you start to enter your elbow extension, be soft. because You don't want to just like drive through that last range of motion with intensity. Be a little bit gentle there. Couple more seconds, three, two, one. Nice, good. Next one, you're gonna take your thumb, you're gonna put it inside your hand, wrap the fingers around the thumb, reach your hand out in front of you with the thumb wrapped inside the hand, and then softly, you're gonna use your assisting hand to pull downwards on your wrist, okay? Really, really gentle. We don't need a lot here to get a stretch in here. For some of you, it could be termed violent, it's violent, we gotta just ease off for sure. I want like a nice feeling of a stretch. Good, exit slowly, other side, thumb inside the hand, wrap the fingers, arm in front, gently find a nice stretch, nothing violent. Breathe. Three, two, one, good. Squat round two, we're gonna do a bow and a reach. Okay, this one is always a little bit challenging especially if you're not used to it. Kind of make a, a, a fist and a hand here towards the floor. It's gonna look silly the first half of the movement. We're basically gonna try and touch our forehead towards the floor. And then the second half is gonna try and reach our hands up to the ceiling, okay? So, gonna have you connect your hands to your forehead. Try and touch that towards the floor. You can make a longer tower if you need to. Then you're gonna come up. You're gonna look up as best you can. And to whatever you can do, you're gonna ra raise your hands overhead. Good, that's one, we're doing five. I'm gonna try and touch the floor using any kind of connection I need to with my hands, palms. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna reach nice and high, nice. And if you guys need a little bit of a break, come out of the squat quick, shake out the legs if you need to. That's three, I'm gonna do two more. If you need a bigger tower, it could look like this, okay. Last one. Big, big reach here now. Give me a little three second, two second, one second pause and a good stand. Cool, how are you guys doing? Hope you're doing good. Okay, uh, we'll do one more set. Like I said, last set, all these movements should feel really, really great. We're gonna go through it even a little bit quicker and make a few more adjustments here and there. So. Last time through, right knee down the floor, left legs forwards in your lunge. We're gonna do a combo here. We're gonna do a backwards reach like we've, been, like, like we've been getting. And then from there, if you feel like you're able to, if you feel like it's not gonna be too hard in your body, you're then gonna tilt your spine backwards and tap your foot for your diagonal stretch. If that arching maneuver might be a little bit much, you're gonna come forwards like we've been doing and then enter your diagonal. If you're not really sure, just watch. So for me, 
I'm gonna rotate, forward, heels pulling backwards, and then I'm gonna angle backwards, feeling a lot of spine. I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna relax, okay? Rotate, and then arch my spine. Back up and relax. Easier would be I would reach, and then I would do like we did the past sets. I would do my diagonal a little bit more gently. This is just a little bit more loading, okay? Give yourself a little pause. Nice, other side. I'll show you the regression first. It could just be the reach. Nice rotation, you bring it back in, and then you do the diagonal. The progression is the reach, and then arching the back, touching a target one more time. Reach, arch, or however you're doing it. Nice, good. Okay, for our last up dog to down dog, we're gonna do it just a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna try and add a push up in there. Geo, you just might need to just chill out for a bit, okay? It's gonna bother the wrist or for anyone else watching that has wrist issues. But um, if you're able to, I want you to add a push up. If you can't do a push up, you can do what we did before. Otherwise, it's gonna look like this. I started my up dog position. I'm gonna get my toes on the floor. I'm gonna bow my chest towards the floor. I'm gonna push out of that, kind of on a diagonal to enter my down dog. Pause for a second, breathe. And then I'm gonna diagonally enter my bottom position again before coming to my up dog. We're gonna do two more. Push up down, push up away. Push up down and in. Up dog up, elbows are strong, pushing away from the floor with traps. Last one. Try and really get those heels down for a second or two. Reach your bum to the ceiling, drive your nose through to your toes. Push up down and in. Nice, good. Last round of our internal hip rotation. Head to your 90-90. This time, once you're in your 90-90, I want you to collapse your shins. Your knees stay where they are, but shins are collapsed, okay? You're gonna brace your torso with your arms, and you, you might feel a ton of hip here, your back hip, screaming at you, cramping at you. If so, you can put your hands to an easier position. Otherwise, for a few repetitions, I want you working from moving your chest facing forwards to slowly rotating that chest backwards over your trail hip and knee trying to even shoot it backwards behind you, and then keeping your knees and ankles flat as you rotate the chest forwards and maybe even over to the corner for me, past the knee. I really feel the hip there. Hello. Hello, hip. Good morning. Rotate back and in. Try and be nice and tall. Whew. Back hip is working today. Again, if you need to, get a little cramping or just a lot of working, you can regress with hands. Otherwise, Brace the torso, good. Other side, can look like this. If you need to find your position though, again, get your 90-90, keep the knees where they are, collapse the shins, brace the torso, be a little bit gentle at first, not too, too much pressure as you rotate back and in. Keep the knees and ankles down as best you can as you rotate the chest forwards. Gonna do two more, and then we we'll move on to some more Classic stretchy stretches. That'll be a little bit more on the, the stretch caliber for people looking for that today. Awesome, cool. Grab yourself a quick drink of water if you need it. Give it a few seconds. Okay, so we're gonna do two stretches next for lower body and then we're gonna do one for the upper body. Um, take it easy if you're not used to these. Okay, if these are a little bit out of your scope of uh, awareness, be gentle. If you've done them before with me, of course, you can go nuts. The first one we're gonna start off with is horse stance. And we're gonna do repetitions in and out of what we call a horse stance. So as I square up with you guys, my feet are fairly wide, okay? Way wider than a squat and my toes are pointing outwards. We're gonna squat down in a moment. The goal is that the knees don't cave in, they stay shooting over your toes. So if you had laser pointers coming out of your toes, I want your knees going the same direction. I like to actively think about pulling my knees backwards because for me, that counter force of pulling my knees backwards 
is better for fighting them from caving in. So all those things being said, I want you to start to break at your knees. I want you to start to squat yourself down, be sensitive with the hips as needed. Pull your knees backwards slash move them forwards over your toes. And up. we're gonna do nine more. Breathe as you come into the bottom of your horse stance. Okay, doesn't matter to me how high, how low it is. Three. It can be helpful to use a little bit of a kinetic stretch here if you were with me last week for or watch the video, which is as I go down, I wanna think about using my quads and pulling my quads up to the ceiling. Five. So that little bit of pulling emphasis roots me and actually allows me to get a little deeper. Good, we're gonna do four more. Breathe and just be sensitive. Any kind of movement can be progressed as long as you're gentle at first, if you're new to it. Do it a couple of times a week and your body will adapt real, real quick. We're gonna call this nine. And on this 10th one, let's add a little pause, cool? So pull into your horse, give me a nice tall chest. We're gonna hold for five, four, three, two, one. Woo. Awesome. Next movement we're gonna do is gonna be mostly for hamstrings and hip extension. We're gonna do a good morning, but in a prisoner stance with your hands behind your body. So I know I'm kind of cutting on the camera there. Um, you guys got to choose how much you want to bend your knees. If you bend your knees 30%, you're going to feel a lot less stretch. If you bend your knees only 5%, you're going to feel a massive stretch, maybe for some of you too much. So showing you guys on an angle, feet are right underneath my hips. I'm going to take my hands, I'm going to put them behind my head. I'm going to bend my knees about 10%, and then everything else is going to be my hips as I hinge. I'm creating a nice long flat back. I'm gonna stand and like the horse, we're gonna do 10 repetitions. I'm gonna hinge backwards, slight bend in the knees. You might need more bend in the knees so this is not too intense. You might be fine. Nice, now look at my knee bend. If it's not bad for me, this time I'm gonna lock them in. I'm gonna keep them a little stiffer as I bend over. So it requires more hips flexibility, excuse me. And I gotta keep a taller chest. I gotta be more intentional that my spine is long. And now that's a really, really big hamstring stretch. We're gonna do four more. Back is completely flat, right? If I show you guys from the side, back is nice and flat. There's no rounding. Let's do two more. Good, I like to really try and reach my hips backwards. So if my hips are right here in the camera shot, they're moving backwards inches behind me. Give yourself a five, four, three, two, pause, nice. Good, back down to the ground. Little shoulder movement that we're gonna do for today, guys, is gonna be in uh, kind of like a cat-cow position. We're gonna raise one arm off the floor, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now. You're gonna hinge at your elbow and try and tap your upper back like you're scratching it. You're gonna unhinge your elbow and then return. Your goal when we do this is to be really solid in your position. This is less of a stretch, more of a shoulder strengthening drill, but um, you can make it super intense or super uh, gentle, depending on how much tension you hold in your body. Here's what it's gonna look like. In my cat cow, I'm gonna work on my left arm first. I'm gonna raise that left arm up and high, try and reach my knuckles to the ceiling. I'm gonna bend and hinge at the elbow, scratch my upper back, and then return. And as we do a few more, try not to let your, your hand even touch your head. That's how high you want to try and be pulling your arm up to the ceiling. Left arm up, knuckles to the ceiling, hinge, try and overpass the head, tap the upper back, unhinge, return. We're gonna do three more now with hinges in the air and you're not gonna rest your hand back down. So you're gonna raise your arm up. It's gonna stay there as you hinge, hover over the head, tap the back, extend, re-hinge. Hover over the head, tap the back, extend one more, hinge, hover over the back, or touch the back rather, unhinge and rest. Other side, left arm up, hinge, hover over the head, tap the back, extend the elbow down, a little break, two, same way. Hover over the head, extend the shoulders and elbow and relax. 
Three now with your hand up the whole time. Hinge, hover over the head, tap the back, hold that arm in height, two more. Last one. Nice. Awesome, guys. We're gonna go through those three. 10 o'clock, we're gonna go through those three a little bit quicker one more time. Leave you guys feeling great. Uh, and then we'll uh, call it a day there, okay? I think we're all feeling really good after this nice short little routine. So horse stance, try and find a position that you were in similarly before. We're gonna do five reps with a three second pause in the bottom each time. Don't want you to hang out there. I want you to fight to hold your position. Try not to relax, hold with tension. Start to enter, knees push out and back. Big chest for three, two, one, and strong push. Push yourself out of that. Here's number two. Pull quads to the ceiling and hold. If you want, hands can be out in front, okay? Catch your position. They can be over your head for more difficulty. They can be straight up for more loading and up. Three more. Pulling in for number three. Find a position that you wanna be in, two, one, and strong push up, two more. Get a little wider if you're feeling good, if you're getting a little bit more flexible, hold, three, two, one, big push, last one. Bottom position timer's on now, three, two, one, and relax, Whew, nice. Feeling the hips there, should be primed for my leg workout later in the day. We got prisoner good morning. Let's do something similar. We'll do five or six repetitions, depends on how I feel. And we're gonna add a three second pause on the bottom. You choose how straight or bent you want your knees to be. Hands behind your head. Hinge backwards, reach those hips back as far as you can go and hold. Three, two, one. Nice, squeeze your hips forward, kind of like an RDL, like a good morning. Drive your hips forward to come out. Two, two. Three, nice. Straighten your knees a little more if you want more challenge. Here is three, two, three. Back is flat, chest is up. Here's four. Four, two, three. Last one, you choose your intensity. Five, two, three, out. Nice, take a seat. Okay guys, last thing we'll do for today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the class. Hope spine feels really good now. Wrists, shoulders, elbows, hips. We've done a lot of things. Is let's do a similar looking movement to what we did in the, with your hands on the floor doing our shoulder hinges. We'll do a similar flow uh, in this cross-legged position here. A lot of you have done this many, many times with me. Take your hands, put them behind your head and clasp your hands. Don't interlock them, okay? I want you to really try and hard here to keep your head in one position. It's not gonna jut forward. It's gonna stay rooted where it is as you pull your hands backwards off your head. Hold, feel that pressure of using your shoulders to pull away from your head and relax back on. Head doesn't move, harden your belly, pull away. Relax, one more. Big chest, belly strong, pull your hands away from your head, do not move your head. And now I want you to extend your elbows, reach up and high. We're gonna re-hinge and hover behind our head. There's, no, there's a little gap, excuse me, between our head and our hands, two. Here's three in, hover away from the head, hinge out. And now we're gonna have three rotations of our shoulders. You're gonna reach your palms backwards behind you and then try and pull the arms together Reverse, here's two. Turn the palms backwards behind you, pull them together, big chest. Last one, number three. Pull palms backwards, pull hands inwards towards one another. Gonna have you rest your hands on your low back as best you can. If you're a ninja, you're gonna grab higher up your back, okay? If you're more of a, of a gremlin, you're gonna put your hands here, okay? Or you can be in the middle. I don't know what the middle is between a gremlin and uh, a ninja, but it's a something. We're gonna do similar to the neck here. Harden your belly, chest up. Pull your hands away from your body. Try not to move your body. Relax. 
and two. Pull your hands away from the body, but don't move the body. Number three, extend the elbows. And now we're into the whole thing, unraveling everything we just did. Hinge the elbows, hover behind the back, touch the head, rest. Awesome, guys. We'll call it there. Hope you guys feel good from that. Hope you have a great day. Uh,